Well, a very good morning, everyone, and welcome to live coverage of day number five here at the ITTF 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships here at the English Institute for Sport, the home of British Para Table Tennis in the wonderful city of Sheffield. My name is Bradley Hope and I'm delighted to say that alongside me is the former cerebral palsy world champion and three-time GB winner Farrell Anthony. He's been here all week giving you some fantastic insight into the game of para table tennis. A new voice uh, from the main commentator, myself, my name is Bradley Hope taking over from Elliot Stockdale who's guided you through the singles side of the championships this week but we are now switching over to the doubles as you might notice on your screen you see four players on the court two for each team and this is our first match of the day coming from table six this is the men's doubles class MD18 it's a round of 32 so we're straight into the knockouts no messing about no group stage action straight into the knockout stages so we have our four players and it is Poland against Germany Igor Mistal from Poland and Maxim Trudicki also from Poland and as for Germany we have Jan Reining and Benedikt Müller so as I mentioned this is the double side of the competition we'll have our winners over the course of the two days. My name is Bradley Hope and as I mentioned I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by Farrell Anthony. Farrell, as we move on to the double side of the competition, how excited are you for these next two days? Oh it's fantastic, the doubles is a new addition um, to the uh, Paralympic programme, uh, it's only been going a couple of years I think so um, and as we go on we'll explain um, the the, the way that the combinations are made up in uh, the um, categories so that um, all the um, spectators and people who are online can watch and understand what's going off. So at the moment it is um, Germany serving, I think. No, it's, Pol it's, it's Poland serving at the moment. It certainly is. So basically those people who are new to doubles, um, each player has to take it alternatively to, um, to hit the, the ball. So uh, whoever serves, um, the opposite player has to then swap over. So they have to take it in turns to hit the ball. So they can't, one player can't hit it twice. Um, and they'll swap over in terms of the, um, who they serve to as well. So it's been a great start already in this first game. So just a reminder that it is five games that make up the match and no changes compared to the singles. Plenty of these players, of course, have competed during the week in their classes in the singles. And it's so far so good for Poland earlier on in the first game. Poland to serve. It's more to serve now. Oh, he just missed the end of the table there. Cheap point for the Polish. And that was a let serve. Well, Poland extending their advantage, 6-4 in the first game, so both of these players for Poland now take their advantage to 7-4 in the opening game. It's a quick match in table tennis, if it's the first time you're joining us this week, the games really do fly by. It's a fascinating concept with the doubles. You just feel like there isn't any room for four players around a table tennis court, but they find the room and they manoeuvre the ball and their, and their bodies, of course, around the, 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 uh, the table so well. Yeah, and the thing is, what they'll try and do is they'll try and tie one couple up so that, um, that the, uh, 
the player who's played the ball can't play the ball again. He has to play alternatively. So, you know, sometimes um, because it's going so quick, uh, the movement has to be quick as well to get to the ball. Point back for Germany, 9-6 in the opening game. Poland to serve. Igor Mistal finished top of Group 3 in his singles classification, but lost in the quarter-finals earlier on in the week to Filip Radovic. We're trying to make up for that in the men's doubles. So just a reminder that we have men's doubles, women's doubles and mixed as well all happening today, of course, in the standing and in the wheelchair as well. We'll have uh, live coverage of uh, table one from the wheelchair as a shot just uh, is miscued by Jan van Eining, the, uh, the German. And that uh, concludes game number one and so far so good for Poland in the opening game. Yeah, so they'll go back to their respective corners now for a minute. Um, Pol Poland obviously had the um, better start. And um, they'll just be, sometimes the first game can go by really quickly and just to get everybody, you know, warmed up and everything. So hopefully we'll have a few five um, game matches where, you know, it uh, gets quite exciting in the fifth game uh, when players are sort of, um, under a bit more pressure to win. So as we've just got a moment here, Carl, just uh, if you can describe uh, to our uh, audience how the classifications work in the doubles. Of course, so we've got uh, the MD18 for the men's doubles. How does that add up and how does that work? Right, so in the 18s, basically, you can have two players. Um, if, you all, if you can see that uh, a class 1 is 1 point and a class 10 is 10 points, you can have a mixture of any combination up to 18. So you can have a 10 and an 8 in the case of the uh, Polish players. Or you can have a 9 and a 6, which is 15 points in terms of the German players. So, you, But you can't have two 10s, for instance, because that's 20 points. So you can only have a maximum of 18 points. Thank you very much, Farrell, as we move on to our second game. Janikski will get us underway. And it's a... Uh, That's a great start. winner for, from the Polish. Not one is long, so uh, back to one apiece in our second game. Maxim Chudzicki, 24-year-old Class 8 player for Poland. Facing up here. Oh, powerful effort. Put some force behind that one, did Igor missed out? Yeah, he did. He came round on his favoured forehand side and played it back across to make it more difficult for the uh, Germans to get the ball, and they obviously didn't. Deft serve on. That one's just loose from Janitski. It was a strong start for Poland in the first game. Second game just uh, being hunted down by uh, the Germans. They still lead by three uh, points to two. And now we're back to all square. 3-3 three, three and uh, of course after the uh, six points just have a quick uh, towel down. We were talking just before the uh, the start of uh, today's uh, player how some players utilise that break differently. Yes. So some players will take the full time to go to the t uh, to towel. Some players won't even go to the towel; they'll just stay at the table. And then some players will just use it as part of their routine and match play. Brilliant spin there from Mitzel. Very heavy spin. Trudnitsky with the serve. Mistal, Trudnitsky again. Not quite set this time. Germany just clawing a point back. Trudnitsky 
for serve. Won bronze in the men's singles, class seven at the 2020 Paralympic Games. So many players in these championships as I was going down the list of all the players that are participating here in the doubles and throughout the singles who have won uh, so many medals at Europeans, World Paralympics. You are uh, having the privilege of watching the best of the best here at the European Paralympics. That's right, yeah. tennis championships. In all sorts of combinations as well. Muller, grab that serve, that one. Just long and long. The Germans are actually playing better this game. They've actually sorted themselves out in terms of um, their movement as well. Mistel with the serve, good rally. Here is Mistel again. Oh, and oh. that's a fantastic ball from the Germans, brilliant. It, it put a lot of sidespin on the ball, so it was curving away from the player to make it more awkward for them to get it in. Fantastic play. So it's another close game here, 7-6. And it just went away from the Germans there, just clipped the top of the net. And the lining. For Germany. Oh, it's another powerful effort from Nistal that uh, advances Poland into that 9 7 lead. Those combinations, um, Farrell, is there in terms of when you're trying to group people together, is that a coach's job or is that a relationship between player and player that they. Uh, it's a coach's job. They'll, they'll pick the best combinations for the players they have to get the best out of the, you know, the, well, to try and win the medals basically. Um, sometimes you're going to be restricted by um, who you can choose because of the players you've got in each class. So, you know, you might not have the, you know, class 10s or class 9s, um, but you might have class 8s and class 7s, and you might have to do combination for the lower points. Um, as they go back to the corner, I just want to mention, sometimes you'll see, when you'll you see when the signal, you'll see signals, um, and that indicates what kind of serve they are going to serve or what kind of serve their, their partner wants. So you see sometimes that the server will signal or that the person who is going to receive the serve or, or take the next shot will signal. So it could be a backspin serve, a float serve, or a um, backspin, topspin, or float. And they'll indicate that, so they, so the opponent, well, the opponent won't know, but they'll know what kind of spins on the ball, so they can react to the ball that's on the coming back. So if if um, our uh, viewers want to watch that, the the few, um, generally the standard one is, um, well, there's loads of different ones, so so that people can't see the combination. So if you just watch that in the next game, you'll see if you watch the jerk, well. You, I don't know what view you've got. If you've got the same view from us, you can see the Germans quite clearly, but you won't be able to see the Poles. But they'll be indicating what kind of serve it's going to be. I don't know who it's going to be. Serve, is it? Oh, it's Muller who's going to serve. So just watch Muller or Ragnar and see what he does. And it'll give an indication. Just there. So into the third game. And yeah, it's just that almost just that little point. Well, yeah, but it's under the table, table, so they can't. So, so the Polish player can't see what kind of serve it's going to be. There's Muller again. Oh, that one's into the netting, and it's uh, one apiece in the third game in a match that Poland are two and up in. It's been a good start. They've woken up on the right side of bed this morning. Early starts, of course. Well, not as early as some of the days. 9 a.m. starts we've been having this week, so just an extra. Now we're in bed for our players and for our commentators as well. Yeah. It was a great push there from the Germans. And a brilliant flick there down the line from Ragnar. Took the poles by surprise. Lining with the serve. And good work from the Germans. They need to fight back in this Third game, 2-0 down in the match. And Jan Reining 
unranked coming into these championships, finished bottom of Group 5 in the Class 9 singles. So it's a, it's a great uh, almost learning curve for players uh, like uh, Jan Reining, unranked coming into these uh, into these championships. Yeah, because it's a, it's a big thing coming to a major championship, and it's if you first if you're not very experienced, you, you know you're going to be, you know, and you, you're just starting out. It can be very nerve-wracking representing the country for the first time. So Germany find themselves five two in front in the third game. So work to do now for Poland. Here's Igor Mistal who's produced some powerful venomous shots. That one was more of a deft serve over the netting. And they've pulled one back. 5-3. And here is uh, Benedikt Muller. Finished bottom of his group in the group one single so he'll be aiming to fight back here in the doubles but work to do and after that 5-2 advantage in this third game Poland are just uh, fighting back and just like that from a position where you have 5-2 in front back yeah. to 5-5 five, five. the gym they may take a time out after the next point if they lose the next point because they've lost three in a row they won't want to lose more than that um, so they'll probably take this point, if they lose this point, they'll probably take a timeout. Finiskin out. That one is long and it's uh, back to uh, six all. In fact, I should say seven five. Yeah, so the Germans have pulled it back. You know, they lost three points in a row and then they've won two points in a row. And it, uh, they obviously need to win this game to stay, stay in the match. Yeah, best of five, so uh, just like the singles. And there, Mitzel, I mean, the thing is, with Mitzel, he's so mobile. He looks, he's looking to get that strong forehand in every time. Yeah, it's, you can... We see he's just pulling it back. It's almost like a trigger and then release. It's yeah. uh, very, very powerful compared to it's. It's interesting comparing the styles between um, Mistal and Trudzicki. Quite different in the way they play. Yeah, it's a great serve there from Mattel as well. And he came when he came round the ball. He went underneath the ball to create side spin and back spin that Muller didn't read. And here is Muller, the German. And that one is long, so Germany just staying within touching distance of uh, Poland. And Poland will know that they uh, are two points away here. Crucial point and a big point for Germany. You can tell from the look on the faces, they knew that was a that huge was moment That was brilliant in the game. from Ray, down the line. In, in table tennis, it's always good to be able to play on the diagonal and down the line, just so that your opponents don't know where the ball's going. That was a fantastic, right on the line, no chance for the Poles this then. But we're back at 9 all. Finitsky now with the serve, and that one is long from Igor Mistal. So this is uh, a big opportunity for Germany to... Get the score to 2-1, they need to take these chances. Janitski now with the serve, good shot by Mistel, Janitski again, oh and it's oh, a and belter! Superb from Reinick. And he put some side spin on that as well to make sure that they couldn't get the ball, it was such a great shot. Well, big shot for a big moment from Reinick and we are back to 2-1 in a game that really Went one way, then the next. Poland, uh, I should say, Germany were in a com comfortable position, 5-2. Poland hit back, but Germany have uh, taken this third game by 11 points to nine. And how much is in table tennis, how much is momentum a, a big thing? Even though Poland obviously 2 nil up, how much that momentum shift now for Germany a big well, thing? Well, like all sports, momentum is crucial. And the, the Germans will be on top now. They, you know, they, they'll be happy that they've got a game on the board and they're, they're back in the match. Whereas the Poles will be thinking, well, you know, we, 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 we may have had a chance to win that, but we didn't. And um, 
you know, Mitzal didn't play as well in that particular set. In the first two sets, he didn't miss. But in this particular, um, in the third game, the, the Germans put more pressure on him and he actually made some unforced errors. So they'll be hoping for more of the same in the fourth game. So very good morning to you if you're just joining us here at the ITTF 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships here at the English Institute for Sport in Yorkshire and Sheffield. It's been a fantastic week so far and you can of course join us here live at the venue. Tickets cost £12 for the entire day and are available online via the British Para Table Tennis website or an arrival at the venue. Get yourselves down here. So much fantastic doubles action happening over the course of today and tomorrow. Best players uh, in the world competing here at the English Institute for Sport. Great rally there, which ended up with the Poles winning that rally. And they're taking a 2 0 lead. Mullen out to serve for Germany. And that one is wide from Muller. So Poland. Uh, in a commanding position so contrast to the previous game Poland now find themselves in a healthy position here's Muller again great serve from Muller there lots of back put backspin on the ball there um, and Mitzel misread it put it in the net And Mitzel returned the favour to Reining then. Lots of heavy backspin on the ball. It's very difficult to, to lift a heavy backspin ball to get it over the net. Again. Oh, Muller with that uh, shot that uh, almost just uh, powers through uh, Chudnitsky. <laughs> to 4-3 now it's only a point separating the, uh, the two sides and just uh, both teams just uh, toweling down and it'll be uh, Reining to serve and a nod of approval from uh, Mistal there yeah, he went wide, but he still got the ball back on the table. And Muller just missing there. So the Poles have taken a commanding lead in this particular game. Yeah, they certainly have. Point back, though, for Germany. That one was long from Mistal. It's 6-3. Uh, to Poland, who is uh, Janitski. We'll just push that off the end. Well, that deft touch from Mistal. We've been seeing a lot of powerful shots from Mistal. That was cuter over the uh, table. And that one was long from Germany. So Poland really now are in a commanding position in this round of 32 match here in the men's doubles class set in the 18 Muller now they need to start to get some momentum now that's a good start for Germany as they need to bounce back quickly a bit of a smile from Janitski of course if Poland uh, to win this game they would uh, win the match and be through to the uh, Round of 16. One is long from Janitski. Yeah, and he just caught the net on the way through and the Germans apologised. Trying to sweep it his way around. Oh, that was a table. brilliant touch then from Ryanair. He put it right in the, just over the net, about a couple of inches um, off the side. And Janitski just couldn't get the ball. Stretched but couldn't get it. Running now. Chudnitsky puts everything behind it. Here's Mistel again. Oh, and uh, also another apology from Chudnitsky as it 
just tips the uh, the net. But Poland, 9-6 in front in this game. Two more to seal their pathway into the round of 16. And that will help. They are now one away. Yeah, that forehand of Mitzel, very powerful. Miskeed now to serve. And that one is long. And that is the game. And Poland are safely through to the round of 16 here at the 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships. They win by three games to one. And despite uh, dropping a game, it was a pretty uh, convincing performance from uh, the Polish this yeah, time. Yeah, you thought that the Germans might come into it, but they, they got a bad start in the fourth game and it's always difficult up to 11. When you get a bad start, it, you know, if you're like three or four points down, it's always difficult to claw that back. But the Poles overall played well. Yeah, they certainly did, and they are through to the round of 16 by three games to one in our first match of day number five. And it's we've only just got started here on the Friday here at the 2023 European Paratable Tennis Championships. Our next game will come from the men's doubles class MD14 and it'll be Germany taking on Spain. We'll be back with you in a few moments time.
Well, a very warm welcome back to live coverage here at the 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships at the English Institute for Sports in Sheffield. It's our first day of the doubles action. We've already had one match here on table number six. These, this is the standing section of the championships here on table six. And we're now on to our second game, which sees Germany taking on Spain. And we have Björn Schnarke and Thomas Rau for Germany, and Jordi Morales and Alvaro Valera for Spain. So my name is Bradley Hope, and I'm delighted to say once again joined by Farrell Anthony, former cerebral palsy world champion and three-time GB winner. So in our first matchup, we had uh, Poland, who were victorious in our first game, but now we move to the MD 14 in the men's doubles. How do you see this one potentially going? Uh, yeah, the, the favourites will be the Spanish. Uh, we've got Morales and Valera who have got a plethora of major titles between them. They've played as a team for such a long time and they've won singles medals at majors and in in the team as well. Um, Rao and Snacker are, are probably a bit ex more less experienced, but it's always a classic in any sport when you've got the Germans versus the Spanish. Absolutely, and hopefully we are set up for another blockbuster of a match these four players out around the table plenty of medals and experience between them all that's the first point to the Germans so we are off and running Schnarker and Rao in those red shirts right in front of your picture played together Previously, these two, Schnacker and Rao, won bronze in the men's teams, class 6 to 7 at the 2020 Tokyo Paralympics. And they lead in the early stages. Spain to return with the serve. That was brilliant there from the Germans. What they did was they touched it short, so it bounced twice um, on the table. Oh, and he got lucky there. So back to three all now in our opening game. And it's Valera to serve for the Spanish. I couldn't quite see whether that hit the table to be fair. Schnecker was in the front and just in, just in the way there. The point goes the way of the Germans. Rao tries to get his body to sweep that ball around. Just couldn't get enough on it to get it over the netting. We're back to four all. Round now with that uh, backhand uh, serve. That one is uh, played wide. Plenty of power behind that one for uh, Schnacker. Yeah, great forehand um, finishing drive there from Schnecker. Set, set up well for him. And there's no response there for Spain, and that's a good reply for Spain. Yeah, great reply there from Valera. Morales right, to serve. is off the table and back we go to six apiece good work from Thomas Rao
Well, he wasn't, he wasn't happy about that, like, kicking the ball away, Rao. He, he couldn't get out of the way in time. to uh, serve Schnacker with the shot on that one just uh, is long from uh, Thomas Rao and uh, Spain need 8-7 Valera now from Rao Schnacker, and that one also is long, and Spain now just have a bit of breathing room in this opening game. Oh, a venomous effort from Schnacker, and that's a big point. Powered it, almost slicing through the, the Spain duo. Big point for Germany. Rao with the serve. Oh, a brilliant back-to-back -back points from Schnarker. That's fantastic play from the German. Yeah, one down the line and one cross court. It's been a compelling game so far. Well, as with that initial serve, deft touch from Schnarker. Rao goes for it. Oh, and is so frustrated of himself into the netting. Really does express his emotions, does uh, Thomas Rao? Yeah, all the time. He, you know, he's a, he's a very vocal player as well. Death touch from Schnarker, and uh, that one hits the body of Rao, and that concludes game number one in a topsy-turvy opening game of uh, this match. It, as you mentioned, uh, Farrell, that was a uh, compelling opening. Game it was match. because at one point it looked as though the Germans might snatch it, but then the Spanish came back and, and won the game. And it's gonna because it because they don't move as well as maybe um, you know a class ten. The the tactics that they'll employ would just have to be different. So you won't see a lot of massive big shots, but you'll see a lot of good deft touches around the table using their touch rather than their power to win points so they will use power but that generally it'll be a touch around the table which, which will win the points yeah if you joined us for the, the first game there's a, a sort of clear sort of difference compared to the likes of like Igor Mistal who was in that first game compared to the players in this uh, in this MD14 match yeah because of the mobility I mean Mistal is a 10 and so he has two very good legs that are, you know work perfectly well whereas in this particular class the mobility is less it doesn't mean the skill level is any less but it just means the tactics they employ will be different and so you'll see like I said a lot more deft touches rather than the big powerful sort of forehand although if the opportunity is there the, those pl these players will actually um, you know can produce powerful shots like Rao or Snacker into, we've seen that already yeah, Schnarker in that first uh, first game in particular provided a, uh, a booming uh, drive down the centre of the table. That's right. And uh, we're now moving on to game number two. And you mentioned, uh, Farrell, in that opening match about, oh, we we're going to talk about sort of the communication between the players and just noticed there it was uh, Morales who clenched his fist underneath the table. Yeah. Is that, that's, it. we're just talking off about the, how important that communication is, not verbally, but almost is physically. Yeah, so they'll have worked out a way of communicating what kind of spin they're going to put on the serve so that their, their countrymen can sort of say, right, OK, whether it's a top spin serve, whether it's a side spin serve, whether it's a back spin serve, and they'll know what to expect from the opponents then. But conversely, um, like now, you won't be able to see it when um, Rao is serving. But he will, he will have probably communicate what kind of serve he's going to do verbally as they were picking the ball up. You can do it different ways. There's so many different ways of communicating what kind of serve he's going to do. Here is Thomas Rout. Incredible style of serving. 
so many various different techniques. I mean, with Rao, it was really interesting. We're balancing the ball on the on the rack and then flicking it up and and going for the serve. It's if you are joining us for the first time, you notice so many different styles, and each player is different, I guess, in that sense. Yeah, because of what 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 their um, ability allows them to do. So, in terms of um, Thomas Rao, he, he uses his left hand for everything, just about. And he, as long as the ball goes up 15 centimetres, it doesn't matter. Valera now to serve for Spain. Oh, that was clever from Valera then. He played it off the side to make it difficult for Snacker to actually get the ball. shot from Morales and the return yeah you see that he, return from Rao was he's left handed he's going away from Valera and Valera couldn't reach it Schnacker with the serve big drive from Rao but this one is long and Spain lead by four points to three in the second game good return From Germany this time, 4 4. Morella yeah. set to serve. Oh, and that one's a point for at Germany. Big drive. Yes, he's using the table well, Snacker. He's, he's playing down the line, he's playing cross court as well, but he's putting it right on the back end of the table, making it difficult for the Spanish to return. And the Germans take a 6-4 lead. Just something on the court that they wanted to clarify. On the table, I should say. So Germany extend that lead by seven points to four. So work to do for the Spanish Giro Valera and Morelos. So many medals between these two. Gold medals at the Worlds for Morales Valera. Oh, that was a deft chuck from there from Morales. He just took took the pace off the ball and and took the ball off the side of the table as well. Very difficult to get a ball like that. And so they've called a, court, a point back, so it's now 7-5. And they're deep in communication with each other as well. So Valera to serve for Spain. Brilliant from Schnacker again. He's He's the one who's making the Spanish really work for the points and he's, he's got bringing some heavy spins. There again, Schnacker. Cute little touch. Oh, it's another outstanding uh, point there from Schnacker. He is uh, turning on the style this morning. Deft shots and powerful drives so far. He's arguably been the uh, best player around the table, has uh, Schnacker. He has. And there he'll be disappointed Valerio, it's an unforced error really, just didn't catch the ball right, but it's brilliant for the Germans, they're 10-5 they're up now. Well, that one is long this time though from Thomas Rout, so just uh, allowing Spain to uh, grab a point, but Germany in control, as Carl mentioned of this uh, second game and only one point away from claiming the second game, Rao, that one is wide of the table and it is Germany who hit back in the second game by 11 points to six a great comeback from Germany and a big smile from Schnarker who has been 
outstanding so far in the opening he's two been, games. He's been brilliant. He, he, he sprayed the ball around the table, and he's taken. You know, he's he's shown a range of. You know, in table tennis, you have a range of shots, and he's shown them all today. A bit deft touch, powerful shots down the line, cross court. Um, and they'll be both. I mean, this, in Spanish coaches in these conversation conversation with both his uh, players in there. Um, just telling him what he wants, really. And, you know, this, the Germans will be up now. The tails will be in the air and stuff, and they'll be, they'll be happy they've got a game on the board. It certainly will be. As, as we mentioned, uh, Bjorn uh, Schnarker, he made it all the way to the semi-finals in the, uh, in the singles at uh, Class 7. Lost to the uh, Dutchman, Montanas, 3-0. And played yesterday, actually, at uh, early doors, 10 a.m. So he's... Had a really full-on week so far in these championships. How does it take it out mentally and physically during a long sort of championships like this? Well, I think so. I don't think he would have been seeded to actually win a medal. So to lose to Montaigne is very good because I watched that Class Seven final yesterday when he played Will Bailey, World One versus World Two. It was absolutely fantastic, brilliant game to watch. So he'll be he'll be happy, you know. He'll be wanting to win a medal in the doubles as well. As we get our uh, second game underway, Bjorn Schnaker with that uh, powerful backhand drive. I think he just missed and he was just shadowing what he should have done, which a lot of players do. You'll find that a lot when they miss the ball. But there he put it on, straight down the middle. Great comeback and here is... Uh, Spain to return with the serve. There's some cute little shots over the top of the netting, and it's uh, the Germans who uh, get back in front, two points to one. Valeres now with that serve. Oh, and a uh, powerful effort from Valera hits into the netting, and well, Spain, despite all the experience and all the medals attributed to both of these players. After uh, going one the lot in terms of games, find themselves in a bit of a vulnerable position. Yes, and it, the Germans are playing really well. They're playing a really good game. Well, Thomas Rao tried to uh, send that back with some venom. That's uh, missed the ball entirely. Yeah. Just a bit frustrated, I think, Rao. I think he wants to get into the game like Snacker is, isn't it? Um, but double, you can't win the, the, the game without your partner, so Snacker won't be, he won't be giving him any grief or anything like that. He'll just, you know, uh, be giving him encouragement more than anything else. Back-to-back well, -back points for Spain. Takes him one point behind for three. Service here from Valera. Oh, and that one into the netting. And Morales. Thomas Rao to serve this time. Another big point for Germany. Yeah, Schnacker is just playing brilliant table tennis at the moment. As you quite rightly mentioned, Farrell, it's almost that, that confidence from the singles championships that he's had is almost just transferring into the into the doubles game. He's yeah, that's right. Like on the rest, uh, you know, crest of a wave at the moment. Yeah, he is. He's playing really well. Seeing the ball really well. And that was brilliant from Valera there. A good backhand, strong into the onto the diagonal, which Rao missed. A uh, very clever serve there from Morales. What he did was he didn't put any spin on the ball, so there was no backspin. It's what we call in the tra a trade a float serve. And Snacker misread it and put it off the end. Awesome. But there's that fantastic backhand from Rao. Wow. Really good. His forehand might not be working, but his backhand's not too bad. 
Well, just noticing of Thomas Rowe on that shot in particular. Oh, brilliant rally that on that occasion and it expertly put away from Spain. But just noticing with Thomas uh, there at Farrow, it's not almost he's using his arm but his wrists as well to, to yeah it's the wrist the that's as well. deceptive yeah because the wrist is the fastest moving part of your arm so you can get that you can be really deceptive with it and that's what he did really well there oh and Schnarker just tried to power that over the netting and this game's hotting up now it seems like both pairings are you know they're, they're starting to open up and play Sort of some bigger shots now as well. Oh, and that one is uh, wide of the table. Spain now have 8-8 eight eight after Germany were in a uh, good position. Here's Thomas Rao who will be wanting to try and uh, get some points for his own in this game as well. Opened up with a brilliant shot earlier on and it's another brilliant one from Thomas Rao. And that is 9-8. He's starting to get his rhythm now. Yeah, Farrell. that was a brilliant forehand from him. Really wide with side spin as well. Well, that's not... That's unlike Snacker has missed one. But it just shows you when, when it's a bit tight, sometimes, you know, you're going to miss those kind of balls. It won't deter him from going for the, second, the same ball if he sees the opportunity because he knows he's got to try and take those opportunities. It's just a really good game of table tennis right now. It certainly is. Swinging one way, then the next in this third game. Quite sure which way this game will turn next. Spain to serve. Nice deft up from Schnarker. And that one is long. And it point goes the way of the Germans. And they lead by 10 points to 9. So this is an important moment for Germany. It will be Spain to serve. Oh, and it's a oh, big reply. Brilliant from Valera there. Uses his wrist really well to pick the ball up as well. Schnarker, can he produce another brilliant serve? Rao, oh, it's another outstanding shot. And this time it comes from Morella, showing all his class. Lovely backhand drive, just flicking it over the top of the netting yeah right into the diagonal as well no chance for the Germans there oh and that one is long and that is the game and Germany well from a position where they were only one point away have lost this third game and how much in terms of a change in confidence will that do for both teams Spain after being in a position where they thought the game was gone have, have won this third one yeah it's feared because it looks as though the Germans were going to win that game but then the, the Spanish seem to click into gear and sort of think you know we need to get we need to start playing some really good table tennis and in, in both teams to be fair then started playing the best table tennis that we've seen so far in this uh, match Absolutely, there were some brilliant, uh, brilliant shots throughout. Uh, certainly in that second part of the uh, of the third game, absolutely fantastic. As the uh, two teams just get some words of advice from the coaching staff and make their way back to the tables. Just a reminder that this is the men's doubles class MD14 round of 16. So uh, again, straight into the knockouts, no messing about, no second chances. They've got to turn up. Uh, own the occasion and try and get through into the uh, quarter-finals. So it'll be Valera to open up the serving for the Spanish. And if you, if a viewer just want to watch the signalling for the different sorts of serves, it's really, it's really interesting to watch. There, but it's, um... and confirmation no change in the score. As that one is long from Morales, and that is the first point of the 
fourth game and it goes the way of Germany. So there it to serve and there is that signal that Farrell mentions. Almost just moving his left wrist slightly to his teammate. And we talked about there were different signals that certain, you know, different teams have different ways of communi communicating. Some have point, pointing the finger, some clench the fists. Yeah, that's just to tell the, their uh, colleague what kind of spinners are going to be on the ball. But some people, you know, they, they have different ones. So it's not, they may have the same sort of um, signs, but the signs might indicate different spins. Two two in game number four. Morales to surf it. Schnacker getting some good spin on that one. Here's Rao. Death touch from Valera. Oh, and Schnacker just didn't, he couldn't understand why he missed the ball there. He just gestured it at, like he didn't know why he missed the ball. Morales now. Oh, big shot from Valera and nothing Schnacker could do about that one. Yeah, and a massive shout from Valera as well. He knows how important that is. And it wouldn't surprise me if the, the German player took a time out if he lose this next point because they need to win this game to stay in the match. That's an important point for Germany. Yeah, and they will be trying to save the timeout if they can. They'll try not to use it if it's not necessary. So for people who are just joining us for the first time, each team has one timeout during a game and it can last up to 60 seconds. Uh, during the match? During a match. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, just one during a match. And there's that indication of what sort of spin Valera is going to put on the ball for Morales. Cute little touch from Valera and it's another big point. For Spain, Morales with a yeah. They've called burst. the timeout. They've called the timeout. Important set moment for Germany. So, in this fourth game, they lead by six points to three to Spain. After so much promise from Germany in moments during this match, it's almost just that class from these two Spanish players even though they find themselves in difficult positions they keep their nerve yeah for the first two games they were a bit um you know they weren't on the game too much but now they've got into the game and sometimes that takes you know that's why it's called the best of five you know with those kind of things you saw some people build up and get better during the game and now they're putting more pressure on the germans they're, they're actually attacking the ball a bit more the spanish in the first two games, it was more touchy, like a touchy game. But for now, they're putting, um, like the last point, um, Valera put a top spin on the ball, it popped up for Morales to put it away. So they're trying to sort of put more pressure on the Germans. Is that something that would come from the coaches, or the, is that just a player's almost instinct in terms of feeling both, out the game? Both, yeah? both. Valera now with the serve. And Morales is just gesturing there. He's angry that he missed that ball. He said it in Spanish, but I, I couldn't understand what... I, I keep, you know, I've got the gist of what he was saying. And that comes that backhand sort of flick with the wrist from Thomas Rao that hits the table. And it's uh, fascinating to watch at these players out around the table because they show so much expression, so much emotion during the games. Yeah. Snarka now with the serve. Oh, it hits the netting. Oh, oh, he just got lucky then. Unfortunate for the Germans, but that's part of the game. But they're generally, players will acknowledge their good fortune when that happens. Morales again. Gold at the 2018 World Championships. That's brilliant from Valera. Straight down the line. Well, and Spain sailing into the distance here in this uh, fourth game. And that one is uh, wide on that occasion, so a bit of uh, 
optimism for Germany. Played well in moments, but Spain have uh, been motored through the gears. And as the game has gone on. Brilliant return from Valera there. Attacked that ball. Made it difficult for Snacker to get any anything on it. On away, Spain. And progressing through to the quarterfinals. Oh, oh but Snacker's still in the game, though. The brilliant backhand from Snacker. Just too much for um, just for, too much for Morales on that occasion. And no more mistakes now for Germany. Morales, sorry, Valera indicating to Morales what kind of stare he's going to put in. And that's brilliant from Snecker. Flicked, he, he saw that he was topspin, took it early, and um, the, <laughs> the Spanish have called time out after that. Interesting there from Snecker, almost yeah, leaning into the table and almost forcing himself onto, even though he can't obviously go across the table, really pushing himself across, across, the, across the table. Yeah, he read the ball really well though. So Valera put topspin in, but it was quite short. So he came in and took it early. And it gave Morales no chance, and they've take, the, the Spanish have taken a timeout based on that, because they, they don't want Tanaka to do that again. Basically, still a tight game. I mean, at 10-7, they're still in the game. I was saying um, to your co-commentator Ali yesterday, you know, the games are up to 11, and you have to play to 11. You have to play to get there. And until you get there, you don't win the you don't win the game, and you definitely don't win the match. So um, it's interesting. Yeah, it certainly is. This timeout really concluded, and we'll be back to the action with Spain, Morales, and Valera only one point away from securing the match. And here we go, Valera. Serve. Snarka eagerly waiting. Big shot from Snarka. Just kept alive. Snarka goes again, and that one is off the table. And it's a big shot from Snarka. That again. was brilliant from Snarka. That time he went down the line. So he's still in. He still believes he can win this game. Brilliant from Snarka just then. Brilliant. Here is that man to serve for Germany on this occasion. And that one is long and Spain, despite Snarka's heroics and efforts throughout the game, Spain are safely through to the round of eight, the quarterfinals of the European Para Table Tennis Championships here in Sheffield. It was a really fascinating matchup between these two teams but it's Spain who progressed through to the quarterfinals so. yeah I think in the end they, they deserved to win they didn't play brilliantly in the first two games but in that game um, they they were dominant and um, I mean Snacker played really well he'll be you know he'll be disappointed um, but that's the game in doubles you know he, the, I don't think really they didn't do much wrong it's just that the Spanish were just just better on this occasion Interestingly, of course, Germany were only a point away from winning um, the third game and yeah. in the space of a matter of seconds, Spain hit back and won that game and have completely changed the fortunes of the match. Yeah, that's right. And that's, that's table tennis. You change on the, so many different things. It was interesting to see at the end um, Valera with his gesture about his forehand because he probably doesn't play that many. But it was a forehand winner that got him the point and it was just gesturing to the coach. So... They'll be happy they've got through and, um, you know, they'll be looking forward to the quarter-final matchup. They certainly will. So we are two games down here at uh, the English Institute for Sports in Sheffield. We'll be moving on to our third game of the day here on table number six. And it will be GB taking on Norway in the women's doubles. Stay with us. We'll be back very soon.
a warm welcome back to the 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships here at the English Institute for Sport in Sheffield. It's our third game of the day here on table number six. And it is Great Britain taking on Norway. So for Great Britain, we have Fliss Picard and Grace Williams. As for Norway, we have Jenny Sletum and Nora Kornelisen. So my name is Bradley Hope and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by Farrell Anthony once again for this one. I know Farrell is uh, eager and excited to uh, watch some of the GB doubles this morning. It's our first uh, GB match here on table number six. Excited for this one? I am because the, um, the GB girls, they are the current world champions as well in this class. And they're trying to obviously get, um, you know, to be the European champions as well as the world champions. Um, Grace is a left-handed player. Uh, Chris is a right-handed player. What's the bet for a minute? Um, very good combination left and right. Um, it means they can cover the table really well. But I'll be interested to see how the Norwegians are because they're, they're quite new as well to this um, sort of format. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how it pans out um, and it should be a good game. Both have got left-handed, right-handed combinations. So this is the women's doubles, class WD14. This is actually a group stage match. We've had knockout matches so far this morning and it's our first group stage action and it's a great start for GB, Picard and Williams up to that first point of the match and of course of the game and that one a nice deft touch from Williams and that one is why I'm set up. It's Grace Williams to serve. Oh brilliant serve. She came round and put lots of sidesmen on and that's why it went off to the right on the table. Yeah, and there's confidence from Grace Williams there with that forehand. Great start for the Great Britain pair. So that's a serve for Norway. Nielsen with the return. But it's GB who are in total control in game number one. As Farrell quite rightly mentioned, it was gold in the women's doubles between these two at the World Championships last year in Spain. So they're a formidable partnership and what a start in game number one. They are leading by five points to one. So it's, it's fair to say that uh, Grace and Fliss, they, uh, they know their games between them really well and complement each other well. Yeah, they, they've been playing together a, a few months now. And, uh... There's Williams, Picard now with the touch back into the uh, netting so it's a second point for Norway this the serve this touch from Williams oh and powered through Corneliuson that was a brilliant forehand winner from Corneliuson then straight into the open court Corneliuson now return serve deft touch from Williams Picard fires back it's another Shot from Williams that uh, there's another point picked up from Norway. This time was long. Yeah, she just missed, just missed. Right shot, but just didn't execute it at all. Brilliant touch from Williams there. Nice tight over the table. Williams. Oh, and that one is long from Corneliuson. Yeah, play, pick our play wide into the backhand. And she's, she's just overstretching to try and get the ball and just couldn't quite make it on the table. Interestingly, Grace has played Nora Corneliuson in previous tournaments. So we'll know the game Corneliuson and Williams well. 
experts at the moment. It's uh, only two points separating the two teams. GB leading by seven points to five in game number one. Yeah, so the, the Norwegians have clawed it back after a, a, you know, a, a slow start. from Sletton. GB restore a two-point advantage. Hard to serve. Oh, good work from uh, Fliss Picard on that occasion. Yeah, forcing, forcing the error from the Norwegians then. Brilliant backspin serve from Fliss Picard then. Came underneath this underneath the ball to create backspin. Elisa now with the return for Norway. Nice little touch from Williams, but a second return. That was a great return from uh, the Norwegian. They tied um, the GB pair up in that corner. Well, it's a good start for uh, GB. They have claimed the first game by 11 points to seven after a, uh, a roaring start where they were leading by four, five points to one. Norway just came back into the game, but GB held on and have claimed the first game. Oh. Yeah, and um, they'll be happy that they've got the game. I think um, they probably just started off a bit slow. The, Grace and Fliss were both attacking players, but they sort of they were playing the ball quite safe at times. And I think um, their coach, Sean Marples, will be asking them to, to put a bit more pressure on the Norwegians when they've got the opportunity to win the point. And um, in terms of the Norwegians, they'll be happy because they, they, start, they, didn't, they started really slowly and came back into the game. So it, um, it'll be an even match-up. Um, both both teams will be wanting to sort of make sure that they win this game. Obviously, for, for the GB pair in, to go to an all top, but for the Norwegian pair to come back into the game to um, make it one game all. So this is Group Two of the women's doubles class 14, and uh, GB in a group of four teams, of course, playing Norway here, but also in their group are France and Sweden so we'll have matches against them later on in the day and tomorrow back to the action in this game GB leading, leading by one game to nil and here is Williams to serve first and that's better from the GB like I said I think their coach will be wanting them to put more pressure on the ball um, to, to put pressure under the well, put, put pressure on the Norwegians. Almost from the first point, you almost just get the sense of uh, there's more intent in the shots already. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, brilliant work from uh, Williams once again. Yeah. And like I said to you, Fuzz Picard is quite vocal. You heard her there giving it Grace a good. Um, on that occasion didn't get it quite right it's uh, Grace Williams but uh, the Norwegians kept the game alive yeah they did well and Elisa now to return with the serve oh Williams of power brilliant return from Picard Williams again but that time it was uh, was long yeah, and the, the Norwegians stayed in that rally beautifully then Just went long. It went long, that's it. It did. And uh, Norway lead by three points to two. 
great serving again from Picard. Just disguised the ball there, made it hard for the Norwegian and he put the ball into the net. Oh, great work from Williams, set up so well from the serve from Picard and it's back to 3-3. We'll just take a quick break for the players. Yeah, they're, 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 they're allowed to uh, towel down every six points. But that's better, that'll be more encouraging from the GB pair. They're attacking the ball and, and getting into position to, to make it harder for the Norwegians to win points. Williams expertly dispatching that shot to earn the point for GB. Start though for Norway after the uh, short break. That's it now. Picard keeps the ball alive. Oh, just couldn't get there. That was uh, a very, uh, controlled spin from the Norwegians there. That's right. Like I said, this game is sometimes you need a good touch and sometimes you need some power. So you need guile as well. So. It's better from Picard. Nice forehand drive. Oh, is it? The Norwegians were just unlucky there. I could see what she was trying to do, play it really wide at, into the corner, but she just missed. Anderson now for Norway. Returns Williams with a deft touch over the net. Picard goes to the back of the courts and the return is good for Norway. They lead by six points to five. Another good rally. Yeah, I think it. Um, yes, very, very good. It looks as though it just clipped the edge. Good work from Williams as that one is long. And GB flat back to get to six six. It's a really close game, this. Really good. Well, Fliss was uh, talking before the start of this uh, championship that she was excited to uh, play again with uh, Grace Williams. The dream team are back together, she said, before coming into the doubles section of the championships. Put away gracefully by Grace. Brilliant. Picard with the serve, nice little touch from Williams, Picard sends it back over, Nielsen, oh and that one is off the top of the racket and wide, and GB now in a game that's been a game of fine margins, have just extended their lead, two point advantage now, the lead 8-6. Williams, big return back and into the netting it goes. GB just pushing ahead now. Again, Grace Williams, that's what that's what is her coach will be wanting. For her to look to attack that ball with her great forehand. Signal into the first pick up there, what she's going to do. And there's a backhand from Grace Werner and a fantastic uh, end to the game. And um, they'll be happier with that game than the first game. They're both looking with attacking intent. And that's how they won the World Championships. They didn't win it by being passive, they won it by both being aggressive and, and looking for the openings to win points game that was at one point 6-6. GB just uh, raised their game. Yeah, you mentioned there Farrell about Williams really sort of opening up and attacking that the ball. Does it come with an element of risk attached to that or? Well yes but the thing is obviously like a lot of players around the world they practice these kind of things. So if the ball is there to, to, to put away they, they've got to go for it. It's no good being safe because 
you know, you're not going to win with points. And you, you're expecting, if somebody's playing safe, you're expecting the other players, to, the other team to miss. And that rarely happens at this level. You have to look for the opportunities. And as you go through the round, if they do get through this round, they'll be looking to sort of make sure that they, you know, um, beat their opponents by winning points as opposed to um, sort of playing safe and maybe losing points. So Great Britain in a good position here, leading by uh, two games to nil. This is their first of three group games in the women's doubles. France and Sweden to play after this. And at the moment, GB, we wanted to try and seal this game. And they've got off to a good start in game number three. And so the Norwegians will be trying to claw this back and, and they'll, they'll not want a bad start in this particular game. Nielsen finished uh, in the semi-finals in the Class 7 singles earlier on in this championship. So it's another good rally and it's a point one for Norway. And Cornelison will be uh, trying to uh, use the momentum that she gained from those singles matches into the doubles. Two-time European team medalist as well, Cornelison. Just putting a bit of pressure on the GB pair. That's two shots that Grace Williams has missed. She'll still go for it though. She'll, you know, but, um, but it'd be great. For, it's great for the Norwegians to find that they actually can stay in the game. Yeah, great experience also for this girl, Jenny's. Jenny Sletton, unranked coming into these championships, only 18 years of age. Great learning experience, great occasion for her. To play with someone like Cornelius in as well against uh, two uh, GB players who have uh, played at the highest level. Yeah, and from going from being 2 0 down, the Norwegians have gone 4 to up. And so they won four points in a row, so that'll, their, their confidence will be quite high now. So work here to do then for uh, GB. Good strong push from Williams there. And the set for set. Picard now with the serve. Williams, oh, just uh, hits the net and uh, acknowledging that as well to Norway. But uh, the look goes in their way and it's set uh, for all. Grace Williams, the, uh, the Team Wales international, of course, played at the uh, 2022 Birmingham Commonwealth Games. And that serve. And try to force it to the back of the table. And it's worked for Norway on that occasion. And Team GB did it that they stemmed the flow of losing points. They've lost five points in a row and it's now 5 all. Brilliant work from Grace Williams, putting the pressure on Norway. We've seen that on multiple occasions so far throughout the match, and she's come up with the uh, big points for GB. Yeah, that's good, very good. To serve, and Williams, although the Norwegians did well. She played the ball down the middle, made it very hard for Picard to actually get the ball. Um, but now it's 6 all, and it'll take um, a few seconds to take the towel break. We were here before in the second game, six apiece, and then from that point in our previous uh, game, GB just moted ahead. Can they uh, repeat that and uh, go on to win the match? Yeah. But here is uh, Norway, they're wanting to uh, extend this game, extend this match. Yeah, the 
Norwegian will be indicating what kind of surf she's going to do. Oh, and again, they just put it wide of this Picard's forehand. Very good play. Didn't play it with power, it was more precision. Brilliant work from Grace Williams, makes no mistake, ruthless from uh, Grace Williams. It's Picard, second serve here, and that one's into the netting, and GB are two points away now. And winning their first game in the group. Sletten now responds, Benilisson, Sletten again, oh that one is long and GB once again motored after being in a 6-6 position, a point away, Picard and GB win the match and are through, they have their first victory in the group by three games to zero. It's a solid start for GB in the women's doubles class 14. You feel that there'll be sterner tests to come, Farrell, but it's of course uh, great to start with a victory. Absolutely, and they know they can play better, um, but you know, to get the first game under the bell and everything is really good. Uh, the coach will be pleased, uh, they'll be pleased, and they'll just go back to the training hall now. Um, after a bit of a break and work on when they play next I mean like this is a group of four so um, uh, the the top two will go through the group um, I, d I think the, they'll be the number one seed in this group um, Picard and um, Williams um, so it will be interesting to see how they uh, yeah, so the second seed in the group. So they'll, I don't know if the next match will probably be against the number one seed. Uh, they will be playing, yes, so France in the first yeah, seed, so and that will be later on today. That's right. And, um, you know, to get the first game under the belt is great, but the Norwegians, they won't be out of it. They've played some, they showed some signs of playing some really good stuff, and they've got two games left to play, and that's the beauty of having the group system. You know, you might lose your first game, but you've got another couple of games to turn it around, and that's what the Norwegians will be hoping for. So it's a good start for GB in the women's double doubles class 14. As Farrell mentions, they'll have uh, two more games left in the group. GB will be taking on France, and that will be at 4:45 on table seven, and then their third and final group game will be tomorrow morning on table six and that will be myself and Farrell tomorrow morning well good starts for GB in the women's doubles class 14 we'll now move our attention to the mixed doubles which will be the mixed doubles class 14 round of 16 match between Romania and GB that will be coming up next
Well, a very warm welcome back to live coverage of the 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships here at the English Institute for Sports, the home of British Para Table Tennis in Sheffield, England. So we're moving on to our next match, which is our first look at the mixed doubles here on Table 6. Mixed doubles class XD 14. This is a round of 16 match between Romania and GB. For Romania, we have Julian Nicolai and Roxana Chiripan. And as for GB, we have Billy Shilton and Fliss Picard. So my name is Bradley Hope, and I'm just delighted to say, once again, joined by Farrell Anthony for this one. So this is our first look at the mixed doubles this uh, today. We should turn now into the afternoon. 12.15 local time. What are the changes? What, are the, what, what changes dynamically in the mixed doubles compared to men's and women's? Yeah, not much really. Same thing, you know, but every player have got to take alternate shots still. Um, in terms of the um, dynamic, you could have a class A woman and a, a class six man. But in this case, both men are the class eights and both women are the class sixes, and they make, that makes up the 14. But um, Shilton and Picard are the current world bronze medalists. Um, so, you know, they'll be hoping to go at least one step further and try and get to the final. Absolutely. So there'll be plenty of determination here for Picard and Shilton and this Romanian duo. Jurapan and Nikolai. And yeah, and Nikolai. they've taken an early lead. Oh, good shot from Jurapan right into the body of Fliss Picard. Nikolai to serve. Now that's a bit um, naughty. It, um, it looks like the Romanian thought he got the edge. Shilton didn't agree, but I think the point has gone to the Romanians. Yeah, it's at 2-4. Shilton, well, put everything behind that one. And uh, as... Uh, Conceded the point. Another big points for GB. It is 5-3. It's 
Yeah. Great start from the Romanians. Shilton with a backhand flick. And it's another points for Romania. Yeah, he's just not found his range yet, Shilton, um, with his backhand. So respectively, Nikolai and Shirapan finished bottom of their groups in their relevant classes in the singles. So they'll be wanting to try and redeem themselves in the mixed doubles. Shilton now. That one is long. And it's 7-4 to Romania. So some work to do here for GB. And of course, uh, Fliss uh, Picard just uh, coming off the back of a victory in the women's doubles with Grace Williams. Will a bit of uh, will it be a bit of mental and physical uh, tiredness just <coughs> creeping in? Maybe, but um, you know these players train to play back-to-back -back games and stuff, so um, I don't think it'll affect her too much. I think she'll just want to play. Well, Romania have stormed into a 9-4 lead here in the opening game. And they're only one point away now from claiming that first game. And there's just a bit of, uh, a bit of disbelief here from Billy Shilton. Is that maybe just a hint of frustration as well in this opening game? Uh, yes, definitely. There's been a hint of frustration from Billy Shilton. Um, but it... I think it's the first game as well, so um, they'll go back to the corner. I mean, it's not over yet, this game, to be fair, so um, although it is now, um, I think there's a bit of something going off between um, Nikolai and Chilton in that point where, disputed point, and I don't think um, Chilton was very happy about it, so... Um, but, you know, it's the first game out of the way now. They'll just start, they'll have to reset and start again. That's what the coach will be telling them. Is it and hard for sometimes for, you know, for incidents like that that happen during a, during a game where a dispute happens to try and block it out of your mind and having to concentrate on the next point? And how hard is it to try and clear that away from your mind? They say that's what you should do, but <laughs> it, we're all human beings and, you know, it doesn't always happen, unfortunately, even at this level. And, you you know, the umpires are doing the best job they can. And if they don't see something, then, you know, sometimes... I know they've got VAR in football. We don't have VAR in table tennis, so you can't just take a monitor and check, oh, did that touch the edge or not? We've got the advantage of a replay maybe now and again, but the, the umpires have seen it in real time. So you just have to trust them. You know what I mean? But they'll set again and... Um, you know, they'll do you know, the second game. And sometimes the way where you mix doubles works is one combination can be one way, can be better than the other. So, um, like in this second game, it could go to the Britons because they've got a better combination of, um, you know, playing. And it will be GB to get us uh, underway. This Picard will serve. And Shilton with a good start for GB and it gets a good uh, round of applause from the crowd here. So Shilton lost in the semi-finals in the men's singles class eight. Thomas Bouvet, the Frenchman. So uh, went deep in the uh, class eight singles. Wanting to try and uh, go as far as he can. In the mixed doubles, this is a round of 16 match, by the way, so uh, no second chances. Place at the, the quarter-finals up for grabs. Oh. Brilliant from Picard then. She played it wide of Nikolai's backhand reach. Straight down the middle. Good work from Nikolai Shilton, just couldn't respond. And it's a point back for uh, Romania in game number two. It's 3-2 uh, to uh, GB. And it's Shilton to uh, serve once again. 
Brilliant serve from Billy Shilton there. Top swimming side spin that took it off the side. And um, just for the viewers, just to notice that uh, Billy Shilton is actually indicating um, with a sign to Fliss Picard about the serve that he's doing. And that's that trusty backhand that was working well for him as he progressed to the quarterfinals yesterday in the Class 8 uh, singles. Jiripan now with the serve. Nikolai with the response and with the points for Romania. Yeah, it was very clever then, uh, Nikolai. He played it down the line as opposed to cross court, away from uh, Billy Shilton. That one is also long from Shilton, so Romania just edging their way back in the second game. So work to do for GB. And there is that communication that Farrell talked about between Shilton and Picard. Shilton with the shot and Shilton with the points. Yeah, he's, he's back. He's been working on his backhand a lot, but uh, of late it's just really, really solid. And there was the deft touch from Shilton, straight off the side of the table, as opposed to a, a rocket backhand that he played previously. Showing off his full repertoire of shots, Billy Shilton and now GB are starting to push ahead in this uh, second game. Fliss Pickard mentioned before coming into these championships that she was excited to play with Billy again, especially here at the European Championships on the biggest stage. They've grown up through the programme together, good friends, and they'll be wanting to try and get as far as they can. with the effort all oh, right into the corner from Shilton he's not really happy with the um, umpire uh, for his Picard he's uh, I'm sorry no, uh, Billy Shilton he's um, giving her some stares and uh, it's quite interesting that's the word I'm going to use interesting we'll stick with that and uh, we're back underway. Shilton just lets uh, that one loose and Romania once again back into this and a uh, timeout has been uh, called here. Yeah, they needed to. It, there's, there's obviously a bit of needle going off between the umpire and Billy Shilton somewhere and he's not happy but it... You can't, if, if you're thinking about that and not the game, it's going to upset the flow of your shots and stuff. So, um, you know, it's a good time out to call. You know, I think Billy called it himself. I think Chilton called it himself. So, um, but there's still points in front. So, they'll want to capitalise that and not want to lose any more points, especially in this game. So as Shilton and Picard return back to the table. As to Nikolai and Shirapan. So it's a close game this one. Could go either way. Big uh, moments in the match. Of course, just a further reminder, this is a straight knockout. Round of 16 match. And it's a big point for Romania straight after the timeout. It's back to 8-8. Eight, eight. Serve here from Picard. And a uh, big point for uh, GB straight into the net from Nikolai. And they're two points away, GB. Another point will just uh, give them some breathing space. Another timeout uh, has been called, so two of the timeouts coming in quick succession. Well, yes, because I think the the Romanians don't—they want to try and win this game. Um, 
and they don't want to lose it. And I think it's more of a tactical thing to unsettle the Brits. Uh, but once the timeouts have been called, they won't be able to use the no other timeouts uh, then. Um, it's interesting to see, I was talking about um, the, the server indicating what kind of serve they wanted to, uh, they were going to serve. In that case, in this particular case, Billy Shilton, who was actually going to, he actually indicated to Fliss Pickard what kind of serve he wanted. Yeah, it's interesting because you were mentioning to me just off air about how from my opinion, coming into it, I thought it would have been the server sort of direction of how he was going to do it, but it also could be the other player, the yeah. non-server, who also has a say in which way the serve should go. Yeah, that's right. Picard is serving. Shilton makes that set signal. Here's Shilton with a uh, big shot and a big point one for GB. They are now one away from claiming... Game two, and it could be a huge moment in this mixed uh, doubles so as you, team match. Yes, sorry. So as you can see, the the GB players took their uh, towel break, but the Romanians stayed at the table, and that's brilliant touch from Shilton there. And that concludes game number two, and uh, it's a game. Won by GB. It is one apiece in this uh, mixed doubles class 14 round of 16 match. And in a game that uh, swung one way, then the next. Important for uh, GB to claim that second game. They just haven't quite found their rhythm despite claiming that second game. No, they'll want to play better. And I think part of that was something that happened within the game and I think it upset Shilton it def well it did, and it definitely knew it upset Shilton but the umpire's got to call what sh she sees and you know you just have to take that as a player sometimes you can't let it upset your rhythm because you know there's a, there's lots of uh, well there's medals at stake it certainly is and I think Andrew Rushton the coach will be telling him that as well because um, Shilton get quite fiery now and again um, they're both passionate players, uh, Billy Shilton and Fliss Picard, um, and you know they, they'll be wanting to sort of impart their game on this third game if they can. But the Romanians have started well. They've both played well. They they, they complement each other. They understand the spin and how to put the ball on the table. They they're using position more than than speed or power. They're using their guile and their touch around the table to upset the Brits. Chirapan, and that one is into the netting by Shilton. Oh, uh, Romania with the first point of game number three. Great return from Billy Shilton, then wide made Nikolai stretch for the ball. So first sure. service of this third game for GB Shilton to serve and claims the points for GB. Shilton again. Oh, and that one's long. Two and two then for Shilton. Yeah, he disguised that topspin well then, uh, Shilton. And that's a lot better from the GB pairing. Good return from uh, Chirapan. On that occasion. Great return from Sherman right down the middle. Made it really hard for Shilton to get the ball. Oh, great work from Shilton. Dispatched that one, made no mistake. And uh, Shilton seems to be in the mood in this one. Yeah, I think he's probably settled down now. And, you know, he's probably that's forgotten. And, you know, that, that's good for the pairing because he needs, you know, when the ball's up there, he needs to be able to be the one that puts it away. Picard now to serve. Oh, and Shilton again powers it through uh, the uh, defence of Nikolai and Shirapan. 
made no mistake with that one. It's 5-2 uh, now to GB in game number three. Picard with the serve. Over that one, a bit long. Just uh, got frustrated himself after some brilliant shots so far in this game from Shilton. Yeah, very good. I think he actually got that. He skipped across. I, I think I couldn't see because um, Nikolai was in front, but uh, I think it was a GB point. Well, it's gone that anyway from Mania, actually, that one. This one's missed. gone the way of GB. Right, okay, yeah, definitely. 6 4 now to GB. Shilton. Just went away from Picard then. Just clipped the net on its way out of court. Well, that deft little nudge from uh, Chirapan wasn't enough. And GB extend there at lead to two points. 7 5 now to uh, GB. Yeah, you could see what Cherifon was trying to do. She was just trying to touch it over the net, but she just misplaced it. A great work from the British pair there. Nice touches around the table. Showing the variation in shots. Picard, here goes Shilton again. We've seen that on multiple occasions throughout the course of this game. Yeah, and a big high five for that. Brilliant, brilliant serve, brilliant follow up from Shilton. Well, it's GB duo starting to get into the groove now. Nice little touch from Chirapan, but uh, dealt with well by GB. And then a fantastic reserve from Nikolai. Oh, good work from Fris Picard and GB claim the third match, third game, I should say. And they now lead by two games to one. It's a good turnaround from uh, the GB mixed duo, and they really showed what they could do in that third game they've uh, just turned it up a notch they have they've settled down and, and I think that's partly you know the coach would have said look you need to calm down and, and make sure you're playing good table tennis and you know just forget what's gone off in the past and I think that's what's happened and he's taught he's giving he's talking to Billy Shilton now is the coach Andrew Rushton um, and obviously Fliss is playing her part Fliss Picard um, but the Romanians aren't out of this. They've been playing some good stuff, and you know that their their game is based around positional stuff on the table. Make you know they haven't got the power um, in terms of say back of Billy Shilton. But what they do possess is good touch around the table, and that can just be as important, especially in a game like this. The interesting thing about this now, though is if the Romanians have a bad start, they haven't got a timeout to stem the flow of the points, so, um, because they've already used it. Well, both teams have, but the GB pair in front, and that's um, that'll be good for GB in general, so. So it will be Shilton to get us underway. Game number four, can they get off to a good start? Good work from Picard, and that is the first point. It goes the way of GB. Both of these players now really contributing to the points tally. Producing big moments. Shilton to serve again. Picard quite on that occasion. So Shilton's using a, a combination of communication verbally and actually signals um, to Picard when he's serving. And if you notice the Romanian, she's hiding what she's saying behind her back. Oh, 
Good work from Shilton. A good smile from Billy. Happy with that one. And this will be a pick hard to serve. And there is that communication. Farrell has talked about verbally, physically as well. Oh, and Shilton makes no mistake. Sat up well for him. He did, and he put it away well as well. Card to serve. Oh, a lovely little touch from Brilliant Nikolai. Brilliant from Nikolai there. Down the line, on the line. Made it difficult for Shilton, and that's what he'll try and do to upset the Great British pairing. And again, the, the Great British pair have gone, oh, and, and Nikolai's gone to do a towel down this time. So it's not always that they'll use it. Some people, some players use it as matter of routine. Some players use it when it's necessary. And there's the death touch from Shilton. So as well as got power, he's got good touch around the table as well. Yeah, really uh, utilising his catalogue of shots is uh, Shilton. That one's into the netting. So GB just extending that lead. 5-3. Here's the score. Shilton now. Oh, and uh, Nikolai just couldn't resist. He went for it, but it's into the netting. Good work from Picard. That was a uh, deft little touch from uh, Chirapan, but Picard dealt with that one nicely. She did. She got across well. Oh, Shilton. That's uh, almost majestic from Billy uh, Shilton. He's really in the in the groove of things now. Yes, he's, um, he's settled down. He's playing like Billy Shilton can play. That was a good serve from um, Sherapan. Wide to the Flissard um, forehand to gain them the point. So, score is uh, GB8, Romania 4. Oh, and just uh, almost <laughs> feels like he got a bit carried away on that occasion to Chilton. Yeah, and showed his frustration as well. Just showing what he should have done. Oh, nice work, though, from... Shilton on that occasion and they are two points away. Fliss Picard is uh, two away from claiming back-to-back -back victories here on table six. Not quite though that time, nearly clipping the edge of the table but not quite. Well, you mentioned in earlier games at Farrell that uh, it, you know, you've still got to get to 11 points, even though you've got potentially a good advantage. There's still plenty of table tennis to be played. That's right, and um, you know they still need to get over the line. Well, Romania are hitting back here from a comfortable position for GB and. Just a few nervous glances from Picard and uh, Shilton. A point here, though, would settle them down. But it actually goes the way of Romania, so it's nine all. And from a position of uh, strength, GB have just got to settle down. And as you mentioned earlier, Farrell, there's no timeouts as well for either team to reset themselves. No, nope. they've just got to sort it out on the table now. And again, he just tucked Billy Chilton up there, just made him rush his shot. And that's hence the miss. And Romania now. One away, and there is that crucial point. Well, what a turnaround for Nikolai and Shirapan. GB, well, they would have felt that they almost had the game in the bag, and now they've got to go into a 
a fifth game mentally, that must be uh, quite a uh, quite a challenge. Yeah, because they're the commanding lead. But like I said before, you need to get to 11 points. Um, the, the Romanians didn't give up. They still believe they could win it, and and that's what's happened. So now both teams have, you know, they've both got to reset. And uh, you know, like I said, there are no timeouts left now. So you might the the towel the toweling down every six points might come into effect here. Um, and we'll just have to see how it plays out. They want to, both teams will want a good start. Um, it, you know, both teams have played well in patches, um, and the Romanians came back into that game really, really well. So um, they'll take heart from that, and um, the, the, the Great Britain coach will be telling Billy and Picard that they've got to, you know, sort themselves out and settle down and, and play some decent table tennis to win this game. So we move into the fifth game here. See the sweat on the back of Nikolai putting everything into this uh, into this match. So here we go, game number five. It will be Romania to get us underway. And it's a good start for Romania. Brilliant from Shilton there. Loose serve. He's, he has to look for that um, winning shot and played it down the middle. Very difficult for any player to get that ball then. But Shilton's serve. He'll want two good serves here. And that's the first one. And a bit of a shout from Billy Shilton as well. He knows how important this is. And he back it up again. Back out of the shot. Shilton replies and you can see the reaction from Shilton and Picard. They know that that is a potentially big moment in the game. They now lead by three points to one. Shilton using all of his experience, of course, has won numerous silver and bronze team medals at European Championships. Bronze in the men's teams as well. And of course, bronze in this pairing between Shilton and Pickard, the mixed doubles at the Worlds. Oh, and he missed it. You could see what he's trying to do. Um, and he's not holding back, but he just missed the um, side of the table there. I don't know if that's allowed, but um, she went back to the coach. <laughs> Very bizarre. Well, just to reiterate, there are no uh, more timeouts for either side. It's a brilliant flip from Shilton there. Stepped into the table and put that ball away with the plum. So GB are in a good position here in game number five. They lead by five points to two. They were in a relatively similar position in the previous game, but they just couldn't grab hold of that advantage and win the game. Can they go on now to secure the victory? Picard to serve. Oh, good work from uh, Shilton. Once again, that backhand flick producing the goods for GB yeah you may have noticed that the the players swapped round after the five point mark and that's because it's the fifth game and it's to make it even and fair um, in terms of um, the place on the table just for those viewers who, who weren't aware of that Shilton, Picard responds. All good work from Shilton. Oh, uh, he just missed it. Romania. Oh, 
Oh, that was a great stretch from Billy Shilton there. I hope he's not injured himself because he stretched very much out of his comfort zone to win that point. He certainly did. His body on the line for GB. And in these mixed doubles. But, but they take a 9-3 lead. GB one point away from progressing through to the quarterfinals. Can they do just that? Picard with the serve. Shilton responds. Here comes Picard. That one is loose. Still plenty of uh, match points available to them. GB. That was brilliant from Nikolai then. He realised what Shilton wanted to do and he played it down the line right into the corner. And there we go. Shilton and Picard are safely through to the quarterfinals of the mixed doubles. Class 14. It was a real battle between Nikolai and Chirapan and Shilton and Picard, but they are through GB. It's two wins in two. Two on the bounce then for Picard in the women's doubles and now in the mixed doubles. Shilton, after losing out in the semi-finals in the Class 8 men's singles, will want to try and go one better in the mixed doubles with Picard. But Shilton and Pickard, after a slow start, really went through the gears and have got through to the quarterfinals. Yeah, it looked a bit rocky at first, especially after the fourth game where they, they had about a four or five point lead, but the, the Romanians wouldn't give up and credit to them, they came back into the game. But in the fifth game, they sorted everything out and then um, I think they would deserve winners in the end. So we're now moved on to the mixed doubles class 17. Now it's a uh, round of 16 match. It'll be between Spain and GB, and that'll be getting underway very shortly.
Well, welcome back to live coverage of the ITTF 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships here at the English Institute for Sports, the home of British Para Table Tennis in Sheffield, England. So we continue with the mixed doubles, but this time it's from Class 17. It's a round of 16 match between Spain and Great Britain. So for Spain, we have Juan Batista Perez Gonzalez and we have Olaya Martinez. As for GB, we have Ashley Facey and Grace Williams. So my name is Bradley Hope and I'm once again joined by Farrell Anthony for this one. So Farrell, we're moving on to the Class 17 mixed double Spain against Great Britain. We've already seen Grace Williams in action in the women's doubles. First look at Ashley Facey in the mixed doubles today. What do you expect from this matchup? I think it'll be a quite an explosive match. Um, both our players, are, um, both the GB players, are left-handed, um, which um, is, a, is an awkward, can be an awkward combination. But both these players are very quick on their feet, so as you can see, um, they'll they'll work it out so they can get their forehands in. Whereas the um, the Spanish combination are left and right-handed. Quick start there from the Spanish pairing. Yeah, they've raced into a 3-0 lead. Gonzalez with the, uh, the effort. That uh, claims GB's first point and uh, Facey now will serve for GB. There's the youngster for Spain. Martinez, only 15 years of age. One experience for her. Ashley Facey now will serve. Williams with a deft touch. Big serve from Gonzalez straight into the net. And Spain are 5-1 up. It's a great start for Spain in game one. It is, and um, sometimes that can happen in a game... Especially, um, Facey and, and Williams are a new combination. So, although they've been practicing, I think this is their first competitive match together. That was great from Grace Williams there, right in the corner, making Gonzalez stretch for the ball. Well, they. Uh Point one from Spain, and there was a lot of movement around the table. The, look on the replay of that one, well worth another watch. Interesting, the starting positions of uh, noticing for Williams and, and Facey for the serves, in terms of Williams when she serves, Facey's standing directly behind, and they're not side by side, it's a different different way. Yeah, what's happened? What's happening is, yeah, what happens is, she's serving so that Ashley can get his forehand in, um, whereas Grace is more of a backhand player. Ashley Facey is a forehand player. I don't know what's happened there. Well, it's a real fast-paced start to this match. We are at 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, they pulled it back, the great British pair. Face to serve. And into the net from Williams. 7-6 Spain. Here is the... Uh, Facey again. Youngster Martinez. Gonzalez goes for the shot from the back of the table. That one is loose and we are at 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, the, what, actually the fact, he just made sure he put the ball back on the table there. Didn't go, he went for precision rather than power. Martinez with that serve, that one is long and it puts Spain back in front. Oh, and that uh, little touch from uh, Grace Williams is uh, wide of the table and 
Almost yeah. a surprised an expression after that. Yeah, one. very disguised um, serve there. So again, she's indicating what kind of serve it is. And that's brilliant from Ashley Face. He was expecting that ball back, was prepared for it and played it down the line. Williams with the serve, little touch from Gonzalez. And Spain have put themselves in a position where they're one away from claiming the first game. The return from Facey. Brilliant from Ashley Facey Thompson. And timeout uh, has been called with uh, Spain leading by 10 points to nine in the first game. Yeah, they'll understand that this is in a crucial game and um, it's a very tight game. And I think that um, the great British pair, although they're a new combination, they're very explosive. Ashley Face is a very explosive player. He'll be looking to get in on any weak ball to play in that strong forehand that he's got. And um, Williams has got a fantastic backhand, so it's a good combination, really, for a left-handed uh, duo. Oh, and Facey tried to get everything behind that one to keep this uh, game alive, but... Spain claim the opening game and they go 1-0 up in the match. Well, you said before this uh, game started that it would be explosive. It's been uh, everything and more in that uh, opening game. It's been a uh, fascinating match to watch. It's been uh, played at a rapid pace as well. Yeah, so both male players are very, very forehand oriented, very strong. And what what um, they'll be looking to do is dominate the points with those forehands. Um, and if if the Spanish pair, um, she, she's only young, so she's quite inexperienced. But she, you know, she'll, she'll probably grow in the game, and she'll have she'll take a lot of confidence from winning that first game. Yeah, she certainly will do. Alain Martinez. Lost both her group games in the uh, Class 8 singles. And now partnered up with uh, Juan Perez Gonzalez in this mixed double. Gonzalez with some uh, plenty of experience behind him. And here is that serve. From uh, Gonzalez Perez. Oh, brilliant there, from Facey. Yeah, there's that explosive forehand. Got across really well. Williams. Martinez responds and gets a point on the board. It's 2 1 to Spain in game number two. Oh, there is that diamondism from Facey. Explosive shot once again. He just moves around the court. Certainly getting his steps in. Here is uh, Martinez. And that one is long. From Perez. Martinez. Oh, a flick from Facey. Straight down the line, fantastic combination. So he's gone cross court with his forehand and then he's gone down the line with his backhand. And that's what he'll, look, he'll be looking to do. Any loose ball, looking to capitalise and win the point. Facey now, apply from Williams. Facey goes again, or keep, Perez keeps it alive but uh, concedes the points and GB now lead by five points to two.
Back to back points for Spain. Puts them uh, one behind. You'll find that both pairings are in communication with each other um, about the way the spin is, what, how they, you know, the, where they want to put the ball. Will always be in communication. Oh, and that one is uh, long by uh, Ashley Facey after a good rally. That one uh, is wide of the mark, and Spain now are 6 5 in front. Williams now. Oh, kept, kept alive really nicely from Martinez. That was a wonderful shot. And uh, now they have that two point uh, advantage. 15 year old uh, really showing what she has in her repertoire. And there needs to be a quick response from the GB pair. They'll want to make sure they don't go further behind in this game. And there's that backhand from Ashley Facey again. Very strong. And it's a good response from GB. Back to 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah. So Ashley Facey just showing the range of shots. So he's got a powerful forehand, but then a nice deft backhand as well. And here is that man Facey. And GB have turned this game on its head after being 7-5 down. They find themselves 8-7 up. How crucial could that be? Facey. Oh, it's... Uh, points for Spain on that occasion so it's just stopped that flow of points for GB it was three on the spin previous to that point one from Spain here is Perez and that one also hits the net this game just being played at a rapid pace points being scored every few seconds Perez now Martinez good return from Facey oh what a return that was from Perez and GB just couldn't return that one Superb from the Spanish just then. Um, actually, faced Tomplin with a, a forehand loop, and it was re-looped with interest from Gonzalez. Critical moments in the match here. And of course, in this game, that one goes away. Uh, from Graves Williams, he put lots of underspin on the ball there. And another great serve from. She's just mixing it up, which just shows you the value of having some variety in your serves in doubles. Ten all in game number two. Oh, and that one is long, and uh, she recreates what she would have liked to have done, getting over the top of the uh, the ball. That's right, yeah, that's right. So, GB, well, can they uh, come from behind here? Oh, brilliant yes, they can. Astrofe. That was brilliant from Aston Facey then. He's got a very good um, range of serves, and he's utilising them against the stronger pair, the stronger player in this group. Well, one all in what has been a well, almost a breathless match here between uh, Spain and GB. And I think just for everyone, just gives everyone a chance just to pause for a second. It's Absolutely. been a fantastic match. Yeah, it's just been played at a rapid pace, like you say. It's very quick. There's not much um, time wasting at all from either player. I mean, sometimes, you know, players take so much time to get into the serve. and But some, this is just like... They're getting into it straight away. But um, they'll be pleased with that, the Great Britain pair, that they've got um, back into the game. The Spanish pair will be disappointed they lost it because at one point it looked like they may win it. But um, some great serving from Ashley Facey and from Grace Williams got the Great Britain pair back into this game. It's now one all, and it could potentially go to five games. Well, our previous match went all the way to five games. And we're in for a fantastic, fascinating game here. And it will be Grace Williams to serve. Brilliant from Grace there. 
put topspin on the ball and he, um, the Spanish player thought he should put backspin on, hence it went off the table. Here's Grace Williams, the Team Wales international. One apiece. Salas Perez now with the serve. Nice little touch from Martinez. Perez goes for it again and claims the point for Spain. And having to retrieve the ball as well. Great response from Ashley Facey there. And he fist pump as well. He was happy with that shot. Facey now to serve up. Oh, and it's set. Another good response for GB. They find themselves 3 2 up. Good work between Williams and Facey. Here's Facey again. Oh, Martinez oh, into the netting. What he did then was he came round the ball and underneath the ball to create backspin and sidespin, and it fooled the 15-year-old. It's quite incredible when you mention there at Farrell Martinez, the 15-year-old playing here at the European Para Table Tennis Championships. What a, uh, what a week and what a moment this is for her. Oh, now Ashley Facey thought that was a let. He indicated, but um, the umpire says no. That one was long from uh, Williams. So we're back to all square. 4-4. Four, four. Williams just indicating to Facey what type of serve she's going for. Good response from Perez. And Facey just couldn't get enough on it to get it back over the net. And Perez, well, he's uh, he's proven his worth with those types of shots. He really uh, puts the pressure, particularly on Facey. Oh, great work, though, from Ashley Facey. Wow, Whatever Perez can do. that was such a great shot. It was off balance as he played that shot. He still managed to get it right in the corner. Uh, he'll be upset that he missed that backhand then. But it's a Spanish pair to serve. Oh, brilliant work from uh, Martinez and for Spain. And uh, Gonzalez Perez just uh, also just uh, fist pumps Martinez to say good work. Yeah, that's great maturity from the 15 year old. She's not, she's not out of, uh, she's not in awe of this game at all. Playing a part completely. Yeah, she certainly doesn't feel phased by the occasion. And that's a great... What he did then really well was he curved the ball away from the right-hander. Actually facing now with the serve. Return from Martinez is into the netting. So 7-7. Seven, seven. Well, these uh, games have just been absolutely incredible. Tight. Swung one way, then the next. Which way is this game going to turn next? It's let... Martinez, go again. And the point one from Spain, Martinez. That will just give her even more confidence. A couple of shots into the netting and Gonzalez secures the point this time for Spain and they are two away from claiming the third game. to serve for GB oh and that is the game secured by Spain and they lead by two games to one in total they really rallied in that final four points of the third game and they now lead by two games to one yes I mean unbalanced they probably just about deserved to win that game um it, it was a top to serve game and just a couple of unforced errors from the GB pair was probably the difference. 
Um, but um, it's the best of five. It's, they've lost the third game and they'll know they're still in this match and um, that's what their coach will be telling them right now. So just a reminder for anybody watching as well that there are tickets available to purchase online via the British Para Table Tennis website or you can alternatively just arrive here at the venue at the uh, English Institute for Sport in Sheffield. Tickets are priced at £12 and you can watch some brilliant table tennis. So many courts happening as I uh, look out across the, uh, the hall here. So many courts in action. So much brilliant table tennis being played and you can come and watch it live for a cost of £12 we're into the doubles part of the competition today and tomorrow tomorrow the final day of competition I was gesturing about something. I don't know what that is. Well, the point has gone to GB. Uh, it must be a service fault. That's all I can think of. Service fault. Well, now oh. the point has been reversed. Right, so they're saying, they're saying it was probably not a service fault. Oh, good sportsmanship from uh, from GB. <laughs> well, that's that's table tennis. I, I think you know they want to be fair. If they're going to win the game, they want to win it fairly. So here is Williams. Oh, brilliant return from Perez, and kept the point alive, and has secured him that point, even though. He managed to get on to the end of it, but that was outstanding from Gonzalez Perez. Yeah, very good. And they've called the timeout. I think it was necessary because they can still win this game, but they just they just had a bad start, that's all. Spain in a uh, commanding position currently in game number four. Of course, they lead by two games to one overall in the match. I mean, these games can turn around very quickly, as we've seen um, over the course of the last three days. So the fact that they've called the timeout just to stem the flow is a good thing. Um, what they'll want is a, a positive um, outcome for the next couple of serves, at least. So a positive start is required from GB after the timeout. Here's youngster Martinez. And she's served into the net, so that's created a bit of pressure. Oh, good work from Perez, makes no mistake on that occasion. Great response from Perez there. Got on top of the top spin there to put the ball away for a winner. But now it's Ashley Facey. Serves. And he's got very good serves. Hopefully he can utilise those. And it's an important point for GB. Now can they just build up a little bit of momentum here? Can they start to rally? Here is Facey again with another serve. Oh, and then just an apology of a hands up from uh, Perez. They know he got away with that one. And it's 6 2 now to Spain. Here is Perez. Oh, oh and just clips the uh, edge yeah, of the it table. Was brilliant. I didn't even think that was going to come back on. But it nearly clipped the net and went back on the table. Oh, it was a powerful effort from Facey that Perez had to respond with. And that one is long. and All of a sudden, this game is just getting away from GB. Oh, great work from Perez and Martinez. Proving to be a fruitful 
combination are at Martinez. In this and game, they played very well, and um, you know they're in front, but it's not over yet. Certainly isn't face C. Oh, brilliant return from Williams, and that one was just long, and that was fantastic from uh, Grace Williams. What a brilliant return that was! Great return from Grace Williams then. Martinez. He's just clipped, he's just missed it. Spain one point away from progressing through to the quarterfinals. And on this occasion, GD just making them wait. Still trying to apply that pressure. Here's Facey again. And that is and their passage through to the quarterfinals secured for Spain. Well, what a moment that is for the youngster, the 15-year-old Oleo Martinez and her partner, Gonzalez. Here we are through to the quarterfinals of the mixed doubles, class 17. Juan Batista Perez Gonzalez and Olea Martinez. Well... Brilliant combination, and they are through to the mixed doubles class 17 quarterfinals. Yeah, I think um, the GB pair will be um, disappointed, but um, you know the Spanish player played they played really well and on balance probably deserved just to win. Um, it's like I said, the uh, Facey and Williams are a new combination. Uh, to come into Europeans and and try and do well, they'll just have to keep working on that combination. Um, and hopefully, you know, by the time, uh, if they do manage to qualify, because they'll need to qualify for Paris, um, they'll play a few more competitions and hopefully they'll improve. But, um, you know, it's great for the 15-year-old. It's nice for the sport as well to see youngsters doing well. Um, so um, it's great that the Spanish have, you know, managed to get through. But um, it's disappointing that the GB pair didn't get through. And for the crowd, they got well supported. But uh, we've got some more... Um, pairings um, with the GB team and more. so hopefully we can get through we we'll get through a few rounds absolutely well we're going to take a, an extended break here our next match will be at 3.15 it will be the men's doubles class 18 round of 16 it will be Poland against GB and that will be coming up at 3.15 but for now just an extended break and we'll see you back here on table 6 at the 2023 European Paratable Tennis Championships at 3.15.